Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Tech Wai from uh, Smart Help Desk Manager. And uh, today I would like to share with everyone about this version 2022.1 enhancement and the update. So the Dynamo version we have been released on last week, 12th of January 2022. So whenever you are updating your Dynamo to the latest version, kindly make sure all the other Dynamo program is updated as well. Like for example, Dynamo Server Socket, you have to update to the latest version. Dynamo Process Manager, we have added some new process and as well for the Dynamo Client Socket. Just in case, if you would like to know more about the technical change log of the Dynamo, then you can uh, later you can get this slide and then after that you can browse to this uh, this icon here and it will bring you to our e-support screen and then from there you can build uh, the more technical change log on the Dynamo. Meanwhile, we summarize today some of the changes and the enhancement in the Dynamo, Touch Post, Touch FMB, and as well this smart scheduler. Okay. Let's start with the first, the Dynamo Enhancement Update, whereby we have categorized some of the enhancement into Marketplace, shop to go O2O e-commerce, in-card, account, and some other miscellaneous enhancement in the Dynamo. First, let's go into this Marketplace. The first enhancement in the Marketplace is we enhance the sales order or the customer invoice to get the customer ID based on the marketplace channel. In the previous older version, your marketplace channel name have to have this Lazada full name. Then only we can point your invoice customer ID to Lazada. But in the latest version, based on the changes by this marketplace, then as long we have this uh, your, your channel name, is the LZ and then the system will automatically know that this LZ is belong to the Lazada and then the customer image created will insert the customer ID as a Lazada. So to get this functionality to be function, after you upgrade, then you have to go to this site giant store, site giant store, click to the more and then after that you click on the validate site giant store. And then the, uh, the new feature will be start taking place. So this is a very simple step that you can do after you upgrade, then you will be able to get this information already. Next, we will go to this shop to go. This is one of the module in the Dynamo and we have added some enhancement in the shop to go. Okay, the first for the shop to go module, we have added in the price option two to the price option five. So this is the store setup screen whereby you can see at here highlighted is the price two option, price three option until price five option. So other than this screen for the setting, there will be the next screen. Okay, this is the product. In the product, whenever you browse to the right hand side, then you'll be able to see there's the price two, three, four, five, as well the current price two, three, four, five. Then the next screen that we added in for this is in the same product. Whenever we drill in to the specific product, then there will be online price two, three, four, five. Whereby we can setting the price differently. In the older version, there is only price one available. Next, in the shop to go API as well, for the upload product and the new price upload API, we also have include the online price two to five. Next enhancement for the shop to go will be we have added this new option of the third party of this shop to go vendor for post we have added in for the third party 
Okay, this is in the company system setting screen and then under the system behavior. And then you have to scroll down to the, to the most bottom and then you'll be able to see this selection. Next. In the shop to go product, we also added in the stock dimension width, height, length, and the weight for the API, new version API to upload this information. Okay, proceed to the next will be for the shop to go payment mapping. We have added this screen so that the posting of the payment received from the shop to go is possible to be differentiated by now. By default, by default, the post will be using the shop to go payment code for the posting. But once we set up in the shop to go payment mapping screen, then the payment made by the in card point, in card prepaid, in card voucher can be assigned to their payment type respectively. But if you would like these changes to be take effective, then below requirement, minimum requirement have to fulfill all your dynamo and all the client socket, server socket, API, post upgraded to the latest version. Okay, proceed next. This is the sample of the payment mapping where we can go to the online store, shop to go, shop to go payment mapping. And then in the screen, once we uh, open it, then you'll be able to see this is by default, we have this payment type. And then further drill in, the screen will be as such. Okay, this screen is only able to be edited. We proceed next. So this is the O2O e-commerce enhancement. For the O2O e-commerce, we have added the stock barcode to the O2O e-commerce product screen. So we have to scroll to the most right hand side and then there will be a new column at here for the barcode. Next, we have adding in the voucher or the coupon handling for the O2O e-commerce orders. This is the example of the order screen. Let me zoom in for everyone to have a short look. This is the coupon that has been enhanced. Okay. For the third will be, we have adding in this order option handling for the O2O e-commerce order. That means whenever we do an ordering at a post, and after that, the O2O e-commerce, we can uh, add in the option, like for example, less sugar. And then this information will be uploaded to the invoice, and then we'll be able to see under the notes here. Okay, next will be in the process manager, Dynamo process manager latest version, we have added in the download O2O e-commerce product, e-commerce order, and the customer invoice generation. We have added in this function, then if everything can be depend on this process manager to be automated to do all the process instead of manually clicking in or I want to upload, I want to download like that. Okay, with this conclude the O2O e-commerce module. And then next we will proceed to the in card. For the in card, the first enhancement. is the stamp screen. In card stamp screen, we have added in the new information for the reference. Like for example, this is the five field that we added in, stamp enable, stamp start date, end date, gift conversion quantity, and the gift expiry date. Okay, so let me share with everyone the screen for this, uh, this five feature, which has been enabled. So we go to this post management, setup, post setting, and the in card stamp. And then once we open this screen, then we will be able on this screen see the available field at here. Once we click in 
one of the example, then we will be able to see at the bottom here, it was at here. We can see that information and we can make uh, the, the changes as well. Okay. Next, the grid height. Also, we are able to resize it. Previously, we are not able to resize on this in cut stand. Just in case if your fill cannot be resized, then you can follow the step as per this video. This is the video. So this is how we clear the default form setting. Just in case if this other screen that you are encounter the you want the grid to to the default format, you also can do the same step as well. So right now we are demonstrating for this in cut stamp screen, whereby if your in cut stamp screen is not showing as the default, then you can come to this screen and then you can show it. Okay. As you all can see here, in the previous screen, we didn't have this image, but right now after delete the form setting, then we'll be able to see the image. And then after that, continue onwards, we are able to resize the screen, sorry, the grid, and then you'll be able to see as such. Okay. So this is the screen and then so for the next, we'll be on this account. Okay, for the account part, we have made changes to the supplier adjustment posting method, the GR posting method, whereby from the previous version, no matter how many rows at the detail part, we will summarize it and then post into the GR as one row only. But in the latest version, we will uh, change the posting and post row by row. So that means even though you have two, the two row at here with the same information, the GL posting also will be posting as a two row at here. So this is the supply adjustment, the changes, and as well, the changes is being done at the customer adjustment. So similar things, whereby when your detail have two rows and then the GR posting also will have two rows. For the next, we have changes to the database validation, adding in the validation for the fixed asset link account by checking whether do we have this duplicate depreciation account to the so that means we have multiple fixed asset account, and then after that, we can link to one depreciation account, whereby this method is incorrect and each of the fixed asset account only can link with one accumulated depreciation account. So in this database validation, we have adding in the selection for the checking and then once detected, like for example, the error at here, the error, we can see duplicate accumulated depreciation account being used by which account code. And then once we have this information, then we will make the changes or you can go to the chart of account and then make the changes by yourself. Okay, next. We have adding in the new bank reconciliation statement by period. Previously, we only have the print bank reconciliation statement, whereby some of the user who is using the bank reconciliation period will be not able to get the correct information from the report. So we adding in the bank reconciliation by period statement. So whichever, whoever are using the bank reconciliation by period, then you can use this report to preview. And the sample output of the report will be as this. Okay, so with this, uh, we conclude the account enhancement. So for the next, is the next, uh, is the miscellaneous enhancement in the dynamo. 
Okay. The first, we have adding in the business register number field for you to select whenever you want to print the purchase order report. So currently by default report format, you are unable to get this field unless you are meant or edit the purchase order report and then you have to drag the column which is available on your right hand side here to your left hand side the report format here then only you can display it. So this business register number is retrieved from supplier setup screen for this business register number ROC. Whenever you fill in this screen and then in your report at here you'll be able to preview. So if let's say you make the changes in the system setup file then immediately it will be reflecting in your report here. Okay, let us proceed next. So the next will be the changes to the report setting. We have adding in the new access right to not able to change the report setting. So the setting will be in the setup user group and then you have to select whichever group and then go to the more access right maintenance, go to the common and then report management, expand it and then you see this is the change report setting. Uh, you have to untick it and then this setting will take effect at when your user try to right click in all the report format right click and then they're trying to change report title display or visibility once they select this one then the user as long as this user is belong to the user group that is not allowed then they will have this message you do not have access right to change report setting so they have to request assistance from those who is available to do this setting Okay, this is a control for the company to not allow the user to make any changes for the report display. Okay, next will be the price alert level control. We have added in the control to be able to support up to four decimal. So as highlighted at here, the price sell main value max value purchase mean value purchase max value are ported up to four decimal and whenever we go to this purchase order when we select the unit price if let's say the alert is being switched on then the screen whenever it prompt up it will tell you that the minimum purchase price showing by the four decimal Okay, proceed next. Okay, this is a new feature whereby we can in Dynamo, we can do the centralized post files update. In the previous version, we already enhanced the Dynamo to be able to control all the post update version. Whenever we have released a new version, and in the Dynamo, we can do a setting to let the post know or oh, right now smart already have the new version so the Dynamo will send the signal to the post okay you download the file right now and then tomorrow whenever you restart the pc then the upgrade will be taking place current version will be we sending the latest files from this Dynamo to the post to be override the file available in the post. So you can do everything from one PC and then you need to go to all the outlet there and then you replace manually. Okay, to get to this screen, so the post, we can go to the post management setup 
post client socket and then the client socket post files. You also may centralize distribute the post report format after your date amendment in HQ and then you distribute it through the Dynamo to all the outlet. You also can distribute your image or the video to your outlet without needing you to go to remote or I want to team viewer to the outlet one by one and replace the necessary files. So to do this feature, all the post, the Dynamo post, client socket, server socket, everything needed to be in the latest version. So let us proceed to the scenario. The first scenario will be sending the file, the cache report format to the outlet. First of all, we needed to furnish the report format which have been amended uh, at the HQ to the Dynamo. So at here, we will suggest that at your HQ, you have a trial version of the post whereby you can do the amendment of this post. And then after that, only you attach this report format into the Dynamo and then you can distribute to all the outlet after you did the amendment. So we finish the report format. And then after that, we go to the Dynamo, open the client socket post files. And once we go into the screen, we have to create a document and register. What is the location that you would like to send this file to? So you have to take it here, it's registered. And after that, once you're done, then you save this document. Once you save this, and then you are needed to attach the file. So you have to edit it back, and then you attach the cassius.mrt, which you have been amended earlier, into the tab here, the third tab, attachment, and then you attach your file. Once you are done this, then you can save it, and then you just need to wait for the post to download. We have adding in this new selection in the Dynamo client socket for this post file I expanded here. Just download all and then the files from the Dynamo, it will be downloading to the post there. And after that, in the Dynamo, there will be an execution date to let us know that the execution is successful. And then in the post, the date modified. It's been changed, then this file is already copied to the post already. So this is the first scenario whereby we are transferring this Cassius MRT that has been amended or changed from the Dynamo to the post. All in the HQ, just few clicks, then everything will be done automatically. Next will be second scenario whereby we want to send this video or the image to the dual display at the post there. So the first, we have to furnish the image of the that we want to send to the post, which is located in the C Smart ACC touch post picture kiosk. We have to drill into this folder to furnish this information. Okay, then after that. Other than this, we also can furnish the video, which is located in the C Smart ACC touch post picture kiosk and in the folder of this movie. This is the MP4 that you can furnish to the post. Once you are done this, uh, the file you put into this location, then go into Dynamo, open again the client socket post file. And we have to create the document and add in the location that we want to send to. After that, we have to add one by one for all the files. One by one, you add in whichever file that you would like to. And then this is the big image. And if you would like to add in the video as well, this is the video, add in one by one. 
And then once we go back to the main screen, if you would like to delete the previous old file, so you have to click on this delete file and then the file name, the extension that you would like to delete. So it will not delete your whole computer MP4 from the post default folder. So all the older picture, older video also will be deleted. And then the new one will be copied over. So once we are done this setting, we go to the document and then we just wait for the post to be able to download. So let me just repeat again for this uh, delete file. Okay. Sometimes when we want to copy a new file to the post, we would like to delete the old files. Like for example, the old video, the old image is not able to be used anymore because the promotion ended or this item is no longer available. So we would like to delete this file from the post. post. So in the setting, we, after it, we attach the attachment before we save this document. So we come to the main screen and then we take this delete file and then we provide what is the file name, the extension that we would like to delete. Like for example, the video is the .mp4. So we just put the star .mp4. And then for the picture is star .jpg. So this selection will not delete your whole computer picture or the video. It will just delete from the post default folder. Okay, once we've done this, and then we save the document, and then just need to wait for the post, the post file to download at the interval. And then after that, or if you are rushing, then you can go to the post there and then you click download all. Then everything will be downloaded to the post. And we can see the result previously. This is before, before we downloading, everything is empty. But after we do the download the post file, and then we can see everything is assist in the post folder. The kiosk available as the movie is available in the folder. So from here, the dual display will be able to display all the all the video and the picture that you selected, that you uploaded. After the earlier is being done, downloaded to the post, and then we can see from here, last execute date, it will indicate to us what is the upload download is being executed for the post. So hopefully this enhancement can assist in everyone in, uh, you can just sit in the queue, sit at home, and then you can do all the amendment for your post. And after that, you just upload to the post there. All from your one PC, no need to team viewer, or you remote through the any desk like that to the post. Okay, we proceed next is the user interface enhancement. So currently for the user interface, we are using this uh, Dev Express and the Dev Express UI component have been upgraded from the version 2.2 to, uh, to the version 2.1.2. So the grid view enhancement is available in the setup, transaction and the inquiry screen. So this enhancement is about the column customization is being made easier, especially when the grid have too many columns or the band. And the new customization form will be able to display all column bands, whether is it visible or the hidden. So without further ado, let me just share with everyone how it's been enhanced in the setup transaction or the inquiry screen. So this is a video where we can go to this, uh, like for example, the customer invoice and then right click column chooser. So we can add here, we can see a lot of the column that we can take, just need to take. And then at the grid here, the column is already available. So you'll be able to see it's been added in. And then if you would like to disable the column, just need to untick it. 
so the column will be hidden from your preview instead of the older version you need to drag and drop drag and drop okay so this is one of the enhancement for the user interface this is available throughout the system on your grid Okay, this is the similar screen. Now, oh, whenever we adding in, also we'll be adding in to the to the uh, right hand side. So let us skip this one, and then we go to the next, the enhancement of the most recent search. Uh, sorry, most recent filter. Okay, most recent use filters. So. In the past, the filters that we use will be displayed at here is in the monotone. But right now, whenever you see the screen, then you'll be able to see the filtering will be in the color and then the green color at here. And if you click at this column, the, the arrow key at here, minimize the arrow key, then you'll be able to see Previously, what is the filtering that you've been used? And then you can select again the filtering at here. This is on all the screen also available. And as well in the pivot, we also have this feature available. Let me maximize for everyone to have a look. So this is how the most recent use filter will be able to show to everyone. This is all the past filtering that has been used. And then once we click on this, on this arrow key, over here, the arrow key, then everything will be show up for the past. With this, we would like to conclude the Dynamo enhancement as at here. So for the upcoming enhancement, Upcoming enhancement, we have one for the site giant. So we are adding in the enhancement for the manual matching of the multiple channel with the different customer ID. So this is our current screen whereby we have to we have limitation to adding in, like for example, Lazada SG, Shopee SG. Then you have to wait for the programmer to add into the screen. So this is the, uh, our current version. And we have made amendment to the latest Hotfix, which will be released soon. And this is the screen of the site giant. And the marketplace, we are, we are disabling all of this. We are disabling all of this. And then we adding in this new feature, the marketplace customer. We are still retaining the site giant customer, and then you can uh, mark it as long from the uh, from the site giant web store. Then you can get this customer ID as a site giant. While for the others for the marketplace, you can assign them to different marketplace. So once we click, uh, we edit this screen, and then we click on this marketplace customer. It will bring us to the news window, new windows, and then at here we can download marketplace channel. So through the latest API, all the available marketplace in the site giant will be, will be downloaded to the Dynamo, and then you can do the manual matching for the channel name. So this is the example of the channel that been matched. Uh, it will auto populate for the first time download. And then the next, if you would like to see other channel name that you would like to add in, like for example, the Shopee SG, Asada SG, you have to take on show all marketplace channel and then all the others that is, that is not matched with any customer ID will be show out. So you can add here, you can add the relevant customer ID in the customer setup file. 
Once that is done, then you can come to this screen and then you add in Lazada SG, for example, Shopee SG, eBay, log on. You can add in, provided your customer is being selling online in these countries or relevant channel name. For this screen, so we can assign the customer ID for the marketplace. And once we are done, then we can click OK. So once we uh, it will go back, once we click the OK, then we will come back to this main screen. And then from here, we will know that we have assigned eight channel name to uh, eight different customer or eight uh, different customer ID. Okay, so once we are done here, we click Save. And if you would like to preview the selection that you have been done earlier, no need to edit. Just double click on this uh, marketplace customer and it will show out all what we have been done earlier. So this is the latest upcoming enhancement for the Dynamo. We are working on this and we will update to everyone about this new announcement when it will be coming out. So is there anything uh, that you would like to inquire? Because with this, we will conclude the Dynamo enhancement update. Okay, so right now we proceed to the next enhancement for the touch post and touch FNB. If you would like to know about what is the enhancement for the touch post and touch FNB, then you can uh, come to this screen and then you can preview all the enhancement available from the version 2021.3 until the current 2022.1. So in this webinar, I would like to summarize from the 2021.3 build zero 2022.1 enhancement uh, and selectively picking up the most important uh, enhancement and share with everyone at here. So just in case, if you would like to know when the touch post and touch FMB version will be updated, it will be whenever we are detecting some very important things, then we will immediately fix it and then we release the version. So that's why the touch post and the touch FMB version release will be very different with the dynamo because the post is a is an active product and then uh, all the outlet there is depending on the issue to be fixed immediately. So right now, proceed to the enhancement. The first will be we adding in the download link for the fingerprint device. So you just need the driver, the sound notification for the post API. This screen is actually uh, about the, we adding the setting for the sound notification in the post API for the shop to go order. So if you are using this uh, shop to go, shop to go module, then you can add in the sound notification whenever there is a new order is coming in. Next will be for the order info, we have adding in the ship attention, ship address one, two, three, and four, the ship tell one, the order customer name to print out in the receipt or the whole bill rate format. So currently the format is not available with this column and you have to make the amendment manually for the receipt and the whole bill format for it to be able to display in the receipt. So this is the example of the column name, which whenever you amend the receipt or the whole bill report, whole bill format, sorry, then you'll be able to see the ship attention, ship address one, two, three, four, five, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four, ship tell one, and the order customer name. You just need to drag to the format there and then you'll be able to display provided your, your information is being filled in in the order info as per this screen. Proceed to the next will be the revenue terminal integration. So for this revenue, uh, we are able to provide the, the notes only without any information, without any picture. So we are adding in the new function to lock more message just in case 
any error is happened during processing from the terminal. This is for help desk and the programmer to diagnose what is the issue, then we can make enhancement or changes to the program once the issue is being diagnosed. Then the next, the program coding has been changed to prevent not receiving any approved message from the terminal. If your host is having some issue with the revenue, then you can upgrade to the latest version with this adding, uh, with this adding and the changes to the program. Then the next, we have added the checking on this message received from the revenue terminal, not processing, not processing the message. If the message is empty, then the system will prevent have any error. Then we have added the handling of the scenario of the revenue terminal, return previous terminal approval message to the post for those new sales requests. And as well, we are adding the checking for the handling of the scenario of the terminal return previous transaction approval message. On, we have removed the checking for the amount transaction, whereby the previous transaction might have the similar amount. And then we only checking for the trace number, which is unique for each and every of the transaction in the post. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude for the post uh, enhancement. And we go to the enhancement for this smart scheduler. So it's been quite some time and years. So right now, we are coming to this smart scheduler enhancement, which has been uh, quite some time didn't uh, enhance. And right now, there is some new interface changes to the smart scheduler. We make it simplify for everyone to do the setting and we adding in some enhancement for it. So there'll be a five part of this enhancement that we'd like to share with everyone. The first will be the new setting page. We can multi-select the database, the new shipping method, and the system will auto create the backup file and you doesn't need to manually create and the main interface changes. First, Share with everyone, this is the new setting page, whereby most of it is very similar to the older one, except for some changes for this. So how is this interface and the changes will take place? Let me share one by one. First, we go to the database name. We can select multiple database or multi-select different database. So you just need to click on the database name and then you just need to pick whichever company that you would like to select. Okay, and here, this is the one for the database name, whereby in the older version, you have to select one, select, oh, okay, I need to do the second company that I need to select the next one, then add the task. So proceed to the next. We have adding in the new backup method for the bandy zip. In the older version, we only had one selection, the seven zip database. And right now, with the adding the bandy zip, there will be a different, different uh, between these two zipping method. First, if we're using the bandy zip, the file size will be larger, but the time process will be faster. If you are using the 7-zip, then the zip file will be compressed very small, but the time taken for this zipping will be much more longer compared to the bandy zip. So previously, we have encountered some uh, database with the size of 10 GB. If we are using this 7-zip, then it will take slightly uh, about 20 minutes or 30 minutes. But if you use the bandy zip, then it will be done less than 15 minutes. So the file size, definitely the compression, the file size will be different. If you would like the speed, then the file size definitely is larger. Then if you are using the 7-zip, the compression will be much, uh, much more smaller. So this is the example of the zip file of the file size before zip is 4 GB. 
it. So once you compress it, then it becomes as such. Okay, you can selectively select whichever uh, zipping method you that you will prefer. Then let's go to the next. This is how the new new version of the scheduler helping you to auto create the backup folder instead of you manually create previously. So uh, let me share with everyone. This is a video. Okay, the demonstration how to do select the day, select the day. Select the day and then select the shipping method. Select database. And then you have to take this, the file by big day, and then you select your location. Select your path. And then once you click save, it will say that your task is being done successfully. And then once you drill in, you'll be able to see the uh, file is being created. So this is by system default, whereby uh, the zero will be referred to the daily. One is Monday, two is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, like that. So it will be by numerical coming down. So if let's say you select uh, daily and then Tuesday, Thursday, then your file name will be 0 dash daily, 2 dash Tuesday, 4 dash Thursday. So this is how the system uh, is automatically assist you to create this. Okay, next. Okay, this is the main new scheduler main interface. So in the previous screen, we can select from the daily Monday until Sunday. So in the older version, we will have seven or eight rows to indicate which day that we are performing this backup. But in the later version, latest version, we just have only one row to indicate. Like let's say for example, Dynamo, we have only one row. And then which day that you take, then that will be the one that will perform the backup process. So like, for example, if this uh, Dynamo SG, we have only five days, we will be performing the backup, then you can see it here, only five days is being taken. Uh, so this screen, this interface as well, we can resize it. In the previous, it's been fixed as at this big, but right now, if you would like to maximize it, or you would like to make it smaller, you are able to do it. So at here as well, we have this history log to preview when the backup is being done. And if we would like to do some amendment to the process, we can take this edit grid table and then select the task that we would like to make amendment. And then this is the selection that we can make amendment. Like for example, we do want to zip by 7-zip. I want to zip it by the bandy zip. Then we have to untick 7-zip and then take it as the bandy zip. So if you say, can I make the changes to the date that I would like to perform the backup? You have to delete the task and then you have to add in again this task for the date that you would like to perform the backup. Proceed to the next. Conclude the uh, smart scheduler enhancement. And right now, we would like to share with everyone about this uh, smart to you apps. This is a new app which is available in the handphone, and you can use it to browse through our smart information. Like this is the interface of the smart to you, as you can see from here. We have uh, multiple news and then the information. So this is the main interface of the smart to you apps. Once you download, then you'll be able to browse through on the screen. And then in the smart to you apps, we have this uh, knowledge base. 
whereby when you drill in, then you'll be able, it will bring you to our smart fresh uh, e-support screen for all the knowledge base for the product and how to troubleshoot on the system as well, how to guide on certain features in the Dynamo. Okay, next we have also the news, the events and the features will be announced in this month to you as well. So this app is available to download from the iOS, Android and as well the Huawei gallery. So with this uh, conclude the smart to you apps and for the Dynamo 